Hi, everybody. All right. This is a very, very, very long transcript of recordings that were recorded back in 1988. Dr. Lawrence Dunnigan, which you can find on YouTube. You can listen to Dr. Lawrence Dunnigan recall a speech given back in 1969 by Dr. Richard Day, who was, in 1969, a professor of pediatrics at Mount Sinai Medical School in New York. Before that, he was the medical director of Planned Parenthood Federation of America. Dr. Dunnigan describes Dr. Day as a member of the order. This speech, uh, given by Dr. Day in 69, Dr. Day started with, there will be no audio recording, there will be no notes taken, no pen, no paper. It was a speech given to doctors. And the entire speech is about the plans to transform the United States. Now, I'm sure a lot of you would think, oh, this is just something posted on on the internet for all to think that there there's a conspiracy the Illuminati are bringing us down well they are and we're living it when you read this transcript and you read all of the plans that were already in place in 1969, what you read is this boiling frog scenario to transform what was the freest country in the world into a very dark communist slave state. But what really was a wow for me was reading what I'm now living. Reading something that was discussed in 1969 and then recollected by one who attended the meeting in 1988 and he noticing that what he heard back in 1969 had already come true but now we're living 2017 and most of what is contained here that I will be uh, just picking out excerpts for you and this video is going to be long because this transcript is very long. But what you will also hear, and if you don't want to listen to me, that's fine. The link is below. You can read it yourself. You can put in the search bar on YouTube, uh, Dr. Lawrence Dunnigan, and you will come up with the video where he is speaking his recollections. I'm going to be reading from the transcript. But what I really was struck by was how every aspect of our life has already been controlled. My entire life, 58 years, I've been manipulated and controlled. And I don't like that. But now, you know, many of us have gotten out of the matrix and, and have been able to um, step out of all of this manipulation and control. We're horrified by looking at our fellow Americans who are being controlled and manipulated. Well, sorry, I had to pause you for a second. That's what my car sounds like now, if you heard it. Um, but 2017, now we're living a time when so much is so obvious, and we still have so many Americans stuck in this matrix. Okay, this is Dr. Do uh, Dr. Day. This is what Dr. Day looks like. 
As far as I'm concerned, this man, he looks evil. His soul looks evil. Look into those eyes. Member of the quote-unquote order, according to Dr. Dunnigan. So, um, the New World System. The New World System is what Dr. Day was uh, talking about during the speech. And there are many, um, the contents of the speech hit on all of these areas. Is there a power, a force, or a group of men organizing and redirecting change? Dr. Day said, everything is in place and nobody can stop us now. People will have to get used to change. And my God, look at the changes that unfortunately a lot of people have gotten used to. The real and the stated goals of members of the order, these elite psychopaths who, who are bringing in this new world order, according to today, it was the new world system, uh, but population control, permission to have babies, redirecting the purpose of sex, contraception, universally available to all. <laughs> Aren't we living that? Sex education as a tool of world government, tax-funded abortion as population control, encouraging homosexuality, technology, families to diminish in importance, euthanasia, euthanasia and the demise pill, limiting access to affordable medical care, planning the control over medicine, elimination of private doctors, new difficult to diagnose and untreatable diseases, suppressing cancer cures as a means of population control, inducing heart attacks as a form of assassination, education as a tool for accelerating onset of puberty and evolution, blending all religions, the old religions will have to go, Changing the Bible through revisions of key words. Hasn't that happened? The churches will help us. Restructuring education as a tool of indoctrination. More time in schools, but they wouldn't learn anything. Controlling who has access to information. Schools as the hub of the community. Books would just disappear from the libraries, changing laws. The encouragement of drug abuse to create a jungle atmosphere, alcohol abuse, restrictions on travel, the need for jails and more jails, no more security, crime used to manage the society, curtailment of American industrial preeminence, shifting po populations and economies, tearing the social roots, sports as a tool of social change, sex and violence inculcated through entertainment, travel restrictions and implanted ID, food control, weather control, know how people respond, understanding how their brains work and their psyche works so that you can make them do what you want them to do, falsified scientific research, terrorism, financial control, surveillance implants and televisions that watch you, home ownership, a thing of the past, the arrival, of the totalitarian global system. Uh, it's, it's to me sickening to know that there were people that I didn't even know manipulating me and controlling me through all of the uh, propaganda and all of the manipulations. But what does he say, just generally speaking, some of you will think I'm talking about communism. Well, what I'm talking about is much bigger than communism. And Dr. Day had indicated that there's much more cooperation between the East and the West than people realize. And I've been saying that for five and a half years. Russia, United States, all of what we are hearing from our leaders, they're working together to bring in the New World Order. And so many people are fooled into believing that Putin 
is the reasonable one and he just wants world peace and he's against the New World Order. He is not against the New World Order. Dr. Day said everything is in place and nobody can stop us now. That was back in 1969. He went on to say that most people don't understand how governments operate and even people in high positions in governments, including our own, don't really understand how and where decisions are made. They're not made in Congress. They're not made in the executive office. They're not made in the Supreme Court. We do have people sitting behind the curtain pulling the strings. We only have puppets in the executive branch and Congress and in the Supreme Court. And puppets in our local and state governments doing exactly what these profoundly deranged elite psychopathic nut jobs want them to do. Helping to transform the world into this new world order that will be very dark, very evil, very immoral, very perverted, and there will be one government, one government, which no doubt will be the United Nations. So people will have to get used to change. Dr. Day stated that people will have to get used, used to the idea of change, so used to change that they'll be expecting change. Nothing will be permanent. There will be no roots, no moorings. What are we seeing today? So much change, radical change, radical change taking place in our public schools, in our universities, in our colleges. Radical change in terms of uh, the people taking down statues representing our history, the Confederate statues and Confederate flag, renaming streets and schools and because they, the names may have some racial connotations. All of that is just uprooting and creating instability in our country. Nothing will be permanent. Uh, this came out of the context of a society where people seem to have no roots, no moorings, but would be passively willing to accept change simply because it was all they had ever known. And I'm not just talking about the change being brought about by these social justice warriors, but all of the change that I, in my adult years, have noticed, have, have witnessed, have lived, the destruction of our economy, the uh, outsourcing of so much industry from our country to other countries. Well, the list is long. Um, nothing will be permanent. No moorings. No roots. Everybody will just passively accept this, and that's what we're seeing. And it was said in contrast to generations of people up until this time, where certain things you expected to be and remain in place as reference points for your life. So change was to be brought about deliberately. Change was to be anticipated and expected and accepted, no questions asked. And Dr. Day said, people are too trusting. People don't ask the right questions. Sometimes being too trusting was equated with being too dumb. But sometimes when he would say that people don't ask the right questions, he felt that Dr. Day had a sense of regret as if he was uneasy imparting all of this information and uneasy with this plan that would transform the freest country in the world. But I have to tell you, 
I don't know. You know, I can't pick up all that much from a picture, but just looking at this guy, I don't think that he had any regrets. He lived a really good life, benefiting from evil. Dr. Day stated, everything has two purposes. One is the ostensible purpose, which will make it acceptable to people. So we Americans get lied to about policy and legislation. We, we're told, oh, it's wonderful, it's good, it's going to be great. But there's always a hidden purpose. The second purpose is the real purpose. And the real purpose is to further the goals of the elite. To further the goals of establishing a new system. Frequently, Dr. Day would say, there is just no other way. There's just no other way. This has got to be brought in. So I will try to go through this quickly uh, if you want to read more of what I have taken out of this very long transcript. You can pause and just read uh, what I have highlighted or read the entire passage that I have excerpted from this transcript. But Dr. Day stated that people will have, have uh, to go and get permission to have babies. Most families would be limited to two. Those outstanding people will uh, perhaps be able to have three babies. Um, Dr. Dunnigan felt during this speech, as he was listening, that Dr. Day, using this word aloud, he had a very bad feeling that it wasn't just about birth control, but that every endeavor, every aspect of our entire world population will be controlled. Controlling all humans and controlling every decision and controlling everything that they do. And we know that that is coming. Redirecting the purpose of sex so, from population control, the next natural step then was sex. He said, sex must be separated from reproduction. Sex is too pleasurable and the urges are too strong, so we can't accept, expect people to give it up. Chemicals in food and in the water supply to reduce the sex drive are not practical. Well, we do have an awful lot of medications put on the market that reduce sex drive, many of the anti, uh, many of the psychiatric medications, the antipsychotics and antidepressants reduce sex drive. Maybe he just didn't know that that was uh, possible back in 1969. So the strategy, the strategy would be not to diminish sex activity, but to increase sex activity but in such a way that people won't be having babies. Wi-Fi in schools causes infertility. We've now lived probably 20 years of so many women having difficulty getting pregnant. The chemicals in our foods, in the water, cause infertility. So that has uh, been executed, that plan, where they can have sex and, well, eventually, especially with this Wi-Fi in school, especially with these microwave frequencies, they will successfully implement this plan where people will not be able to get pregnant because infertility will just be universal contraception universally available to all. Well, we do know that it is available to all. And he stated that contraceptives will be displayed much more prominently in drugstores, right up with the cigarettes and chewing gum 
and that was to manipulate the American people to get them to be more open about the use of contraception and that eventually nobody would be uh, having to ask for contraceptives that were under the counter, they would just be able to pick them up right next to something commonly used and it would just be something that was now not even regarded as anything unusual. Contraceptives would be advertised but also dispensed in the schools in association with sex education and we are seeing that. Sex education as a tool of world government and look at what we are living now with our public school teachers. Sex education was to get kids interested early, making the connection between sex and the need for contraception early in their lives even before they became very active. We're living it. School-based clinic programs will um, be in our public schools. Many cities in the United States by this time, and he was talking about back in 1988, many cities had already established these school-based clinics which are primarily contraception, birth control, population control clinics. The idea was to get the connection between sex and contraception introduced and reinforced in school. And that idea would be carried over into marriage. Marriage itself would be diminished in importance because most people um, would no longer regard sexual activity as uh, an, uh, as something sacred. People would no longer be marrying to have sex, as most of the population did just shortly ago, I mean back in the 50s. He said that most people probably would want to get married still, but it would never be attached. Marriage, that idea, would never be attached to uh, sexual activity. And that's what we're living. Tax-funded abortion as population control. Back in 69, Roe v. Wade. It would be four years before Roe v. Wade, that decision, would hit the United States. But Dr. Day said four years before, abortion will no longer be a crime. Abortion will be accepted as normal and would be paid for by the taxes for people who could not pay for their own abortions. Contraceptives would be made available by tax money so that nobody would have to do without contraceptives. And school sex programs would lead to more pregnancies, or if school sex programs would lead to more pregnancies in children, that was seen as no problem. Parents who were opposed to abortion on moral or religious grounds would change their minds if their teenage daughters got pregnant. And Dr. Day was convinced that only a few diehards would be left opposing abortion. And because they were just a few, they wouldn't matter at all. Encouraging homosexuality, people will be given permission to be homosexual. Elderly people will be encouraged to continue to have active sex lives into the very old ages. Everyone will be given permission to have sex, to enjoy, however they want, anything goes. They were bringing in an anything goes lifestyle here in the United States. So this section is not just about homosexuality, but, but just saturating us with sex from movies in TV, saturating children 
with sex education. I mean, what are we living? These children in kindergarten are now having sex ed taught to them? Five-year-olds? I mean, this is a reflection of how insane our society has become. Trust me, it's not the elite who are forcing this upon us. When it gets so obvious, you have to look at the American people who are accepting this. That we still have five-year-olds being taught about transgenderism, homosexuality. They can be whatever sex that they want to be. When we have kids in elementary school being taught how to have safe sex. It's the teachers, it's all the adults who are involved in the education system, but primarily it's the parents who are, who are clearly still of low numbers that they cannot get this out of the schools. But he talked about how clothing would be made more stimulating and provocative. Look at what has happened to our clothing. Now, when I was a kid and I wore jeans, and I was frowned upon by adults. These were jeans that actually closed above my hips. And I was really frowned upon when I wore jeans with holes in the knee. I remember going to school and I wanted to wear pants in first grade. I remember having to wear a skirt, forced to wear a skirt but I would slip my pants on underneath the skirt. I hated skirts. I was a tomboy. And huh, getting in so much trouble for wearing pants. So this is not just a, uh, oh, the younger generation. Well, you remember when you were young and adults frowned upon you. We weren't walking around. Well, many women were work, walking around with these mini skirts, but look at what the young are wearing today. And look at what Hollywood is promoting to them, or the music industry is promoting to them. These women who are, they look absolutely like disgusting, perverted sluts. And, and we can't get this out of our society. So Dr. Day was talking about not just the amount of skin that is exposed that makes clothing sexually seductive, but he also talked about more subtle things. Things like movement and the cut of clothing and the kind of fabric, the positioning of accessories. But no detail was talked about with the provocative clothing. This was, yeah, the feminist, the, 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 uh, the beginning of the feminist movement, the burn your bra period. But Dr. Day was against burning bra because women who don't wear bras, well, that's ugly. So he suggested that bras would come back but they would be thinner and softer, allowing more natural movement, much more revealing than those heavier bras that were in style back in the late 60s. And that has taken place. Technology, sex and reproduction would be separated. And how many articles have we come across in the recent years? China, China, um, successfully, uh, producing embryos and babies in factories. We know that they can do this and eventually human beings will not be having babies. They will produce them in a factory because we have the technology and they know how to do it. And he said back in 1969 that uh, the reproduction of sex will have nothing to do with human beings, that it will be done in a laboratory. And uh, there was a section which I, uh, sorry, um, 
but it was talking about the uh, the families will no longer be of importance and one of the ways in which they were going to bring that uh, into being was that they would begin to disrupt families more men will be transferred to other cities and in their jobs more men would have to travel it would be harder for families to stay together marriage relationships will become less stable it will tend to make people less willing to have babies the extended family will be smaller and more remote travel would be made easier, less expensive for a while so that people who did have to travel would feel they could get back to their families easily. But that then would be harder when people are losing their jobs and the expense of travel will be um, greater. He said to bring in the easy divorce and the net effects of easy divorce laws combined with the promotion of travel and transferring families from one city to another was to create instability in the families. If both husband and wife are working and one partner is transferred and the other one may not be easily transferred or may realize that if they give up their job they may not be able to find another job in a new location. Well, that may bring about divorce. How many people have you known who have faced that circumstance? I have known so many. So many. Yes, a rather diabolical approach to the whole thing. But did we realize that this was deliberate? No. Euthanasia and the demise pill. Think about Obamacare. Think about those, um, oh, what were they called? The death uh, councils or something? Everybody has a right to live only so long. That's what Dr. Day said. The old are no longer useful. They become a burden. Um, an arbitrary age would be set when people are no longer productive, no longer working and contributing, then they should be ready to step aside for the next generation. And some things that would help people realize that they had lived long enough. How many of you who are of my age, I'm 58, I'm a young baby boomer, but those who are older or even younger, this was happening to me probably 15 years ago. I would pick up a product and then try to read the ingredients and the, um, the type was so small that I couldn't read it. Now I had 20-20. And then I noticed that the type, the, the actual words on labels were getting smaller and smaller. And then my vision started. And even with glasses today, there are so many products. When I go and I look to read the ingredients on products, I literally cannot see it. Even with magnifying glasses, and I did think to myself, I remember really thinking, they're doing this deliberately just to annoy the crap out of baby boomers who are getting older. So I come across this. Dr. Day talked about uh, making forms that were necessary for elderly people to fill out or people who are getting older. Use a very pale printing ink that would be hard to read. And if it was hard for them to read, they would realize that they were getting older and less 
productive and less useful. And please, you know, I have posted videos and I've gotten comments from people who, you know, are very, very upset with me when I say these elderly homes, that that is absolutely a reflection of the breakdown in families, the breakdown in humanity when we are putting the elderly into these warehouses who are treated horribly on the whole, I'm not saying everybody, but they're just parked there until they die. That was brought about deliberately to break down the family and also for those who were not in these homes, the younger generations, they would look at the elderly and consider them useless. And that is how Americans regard their elderly. It's one of the reasons why I've always wanted to be a Native American back, you know, hundreds of years ago, because we certainly destroyed the Native Americans. But um, in all of my readings about Native American spirituality, their culture, yeah, I have always gravitated towards that. But Native Americans considered wrinkles a sign of wisdom. What do we consider it here? Ugly. Don't want to look at it. Gotta get plastic surgery to remove them. Limiting access to affordable medical care. What? What has happened with Obamacare? Premiums gone up, less services available. Um, so, uh, these uh, deductibles so high that people don't even go to the doctor because they can't afford the outpayment out of their own pocket, they're deductible. What a burden it is on the young to try to maintain the old people. When the young would become agreeable to helping mom and dad along the way, provided this was done humanely and with dignity, the young would have farewell parties. And after the party, the parents would take a demise pill. Now certainly our culture has not turned that dark yet, but what was this about? Okay, the young would get tired of having to pay the cost of the elderly. And Obamacare was forcing the young into buying a product in a free country, forcing the young to buy a product that they were very upset about because they, they were still healthy and they didn't want to have to buy this product having to outlay an awful lot of money because it, they didn't have a benefit. The money that they would outlay would be helping the elderly. So many young just took the hit of the penalty. But when you have policies like that, that are actually enacted, it causes division between people. It causes division between the generations. Planning the control over medicine. There would be profound changes in the practice of medicine. It would be tightly controlled. Now, in 1969, Congress was not going along with a national health insurance. They wanted national health insurance back in 1969. But Congress, our members of Congress today, well, it looks like it's coming in. But in 1969, we would never have had Obamacare passed. All health care delivery would come under tight control. Medical care would be closely connected to work. If you don't work or can't work, you won't have access to medical care. And how many employers are having to 
um, take on the burden of supplying their employees with medical care. But that also traps the employee in a job that they may hate because they don't leave that job because they're afraid they won't get medical insurance like they presently have. The whole friggin' thing has trapped all of us in this incredibly diabolical plan that we could not see and therefore could not stop. So it took an awful long time, well not so long, a couple of decades, to get control over the medical system. Obamacare, uh, doctors are leaving their practice because they're so flooded with paperwork that they have to fill out. Uh, very often, doctors are not paid um, for their uh, services provided to Medicaid and Medicare patients. And they're throwing up their arms. They're done. But here, the days of hospitals giving away free care would gradually wind down. Costs would be forced up so that people would not be able to afford to go without insurance. Your medical care uh, would be paid for by others. Therefore, you would gratefully accept it. Paid for by your employer. Paid for by your insurance company. You would be on bended knee. What? was offered to you as a privilege. Yes, medical care is not a right. It is a privilege. Your role being responsible for your own care would be diminished. Everybody would be made dependent on insurance. And if you don't have insurance, then you pay directly. And the cost of your care will be enormous. The insurance company, however, paying for your care does not pay the same amount. Shoot. Have I ever told you how much I hate cars? <laughs> I really have. I've, I, I have always felt like I'm living in the wrong era, that I should have been living in the era of pre-industrialization, when we did not have cars or planes or all of this technology. I think I would have been much happier with a horse. Anyway, insurance companies, however, will be paying for your care, but that does not mean that they will be paying the same amount. If you are charged, say, 600 for the use of an operating room, the insurance company will be paying 300 or 400, but that will be kept from you. You will not know that the insurance companies are paying far less than what you would have had to pay I wonder if that really is occurring. I bet it is. But when you see your bill, you'll be grateful that the insurance company could pay. It's all about trapping Americans. The whole billing will be fraudulent. Theft of hospital equipment, things like typewriters and microscopes and so forth would be allowed and exaggerated. Reports of it would be exaggerated so that this would be the excuse needed to establish the need for strict security until people got used to it. Identification badges with photographs will come in. They'll be brought in gradually and then everybody will have to be using these identification badges and it will then just be accepted. The need for IDs to move about would start in small ways, hospitals, some businesses, but gradually expanded to include everybody in all places. Now the solo practitioner would become a thing of the past, and the solo practitioner, we still have general practitioners, but what are they there for? They are the gateway to the doctors who specialize. 
Most doctors would be employed by an institution of one kind or another. Group practice would be encouraged, corporations would be encouraged, and then once the corporate image of medical care gradually became more and more acceptable, doctors would more and more become employees rather than independent contractors. These employees would serve their employer, not their patient. How many doctors do you know are not serving their patients? They serve the insurance companies. They serve, serve uh, their uh, medical group. Do we still have HMOs? Those organizations that were brought about in the early 20s? He meant, oh here, he mentions HMOs. And that was brought about to transform the medical system. National health insurance approach did not get through Congress, not back in the 60s. Um, solo practice today has become almost unaffordable for doctors, so they do have to join these groups and they would begin to experience great loss of income. We're living it. New difficult to diagnose and untreatable diseases. How many comments do I get from you that you're going back and forth to doctors, that you have these symptoms that cannot be di diagnosed? Fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, these diagnoses just brought about because they can't figure out what the hell is going on with somebody, so they slap them with these diagnoses. So yes, this has absolutely occurred. There would be new diseases to appear, which had never been seen before. Morgellons, AIDS, they would be very difficult to diagnose, and they would be untreatable for a very long time. And Dr. Dunnigan believed that AIDS was manufactured, and we all know that it was. Suppressing cancer cures as a means of population control. Dr. Day said back in 1969 that we can cure almost every cancer right now and all you have to do is look at information that is on file in the Rockefeller Institute. But if people stopped dying of cancer how rapidly we would become overpopulated. You may as well die of cancer as of something else. Cancer treatment would become the focus. Are we not living that today? Inducing heart attacks as a form of assassination. We do know that they have the technology to induce heart attacks to assassinate people. Um, Breitbart and many others. But um, there were many doctors who were very uh, shocked by hearing this, not understanding the technology that was already existing or in the works to bring about. And he then went on to talk about nutrition and exercise. Okay, he said we would see many people running running. People would have to eat right and exercise right to live as long as before, but most won't. Particular nutrients would uh, be either inadequate or in excess in foods that people buy, but people would be too dumb or too lazy to exercise. And that would mean that they eating these processed foods with all of these inadequate um, nutrients, not getting the nutrients that they actually need, sitting around being lazy would just circulate fat and predispose them to disease. He said uh, diet information would be widely available but most people, particularly stupid people, who had no right to continue living anyway, would ignore the advice and just go on and eat 
what was convenient and tasted good. There were some other unpleasant things that he said about food that Dr. Dunnigan could not recall, but he remembers just feeling like he had to plant a garden in the backyard to get foods that would sustain his life based on what he was hearing of the plans that were to be uh, forced upon the American people. With regard to exercise, more people would be exercising more, especially running. People will be running all over the place. Don't we see people running all over the place? He pointed out how supply produces demand, athletic clothing and equipment would be more widely available and glamorized, particularly as regards to running shoes. This would stimulate people to develop an interest in running as part of a whole sort of public propaganda campaign. People will be encouraged then to buy the attractive sports equipment, get into exercise. In connection with nutrition, he also mentioned that public eating places would rapidly increase. And where did this come from? Don't know. Sorry, uh, things happen on my computer that I don't understand. Yes. People will become less dependent on their kitchens. They will be eating more convenience foods that will be made wildly, uh, widely available. Things that one could pop into the microwave, whole meals would be available, prefixed. And convenience foods would be part of the hazards. Anybody who was lazy enough to want the convenience foods rather than fixing their own, um, fixing his own meal, also had better be energetic enough to exercise because if he was too lazy to exercise and too lazy to fix his own food, then he didn't deserve to live very long. This was all presented as sort of a moral judgment about people and what they should do with their energies. But people who are smart, who would learn about nutrition, and who are disciplined enough to eat right and exercise would live longer. Education as a tool for accelerating onset of puberty and evolution. Dr. Day said in connection with health and later in connection with education, and connecting to accelerating the process of evolutionary change. He made this statement, we think that we can push evolution faster and in the direction we want it to go. Blending all religions. Religion is not necessarily bad. A lot of people seem to need religion with its mysteries and rituals. So they will have religion, but the major religions of the day have to be changed because they are not compatible with the changes to come. The old religions uh, will have to go, especially Christianity, and we are seeing this war on Christianity today. Once the Roman Catholic Church is brought down, the rest of Christianity will f follow easily. Then a new religion can be accepted for use all over the world. It will incorporate something from all of the old ones to make it more easy for people to accept and feel at home. Most people won't be too concerned with religion. They will realize that they don't need it. Changing the Bible through revisions of key words. Now, I read an article a couple of years ago how the King James Bible, there was going to be a new edition with changes in it. And I remember thinking, Jesus, how how is it that this is the word of God and man can just change the word of God. All right, well, it's written by man, but uh, yeah, they have been bringing in revisions to the Bible. And how will they do that? They'll gradually change keywords, which will replace the old words uh, just with various shades of meaning then the meaning attached to the new world word can be close to the old word and as time goes on other shades of meaning of that word can be emphasized and then gradually that word 
replaced with another word. Everything in scripture need not be rewritten. They just needed to change keywords. Most people won't know the difference. The few who do notice the difference, they won't be enough to matter about. There's no concern when there's only a few who know that this is being um, executed. The churches will help us. Some of you probably probably think the churches won't stand for this. But then he said the churches will help us. Yes, the churches are absolutely helping the elite transform this country into complete and utter darkness. And how many churches have been infiltrated by the Department of Homeland Security? That's why we hear these pastors and priests dictating to their uh, congregation that they have to follow the orders of the government. Restructuring education as a tool of indoctrination. In, a, in addition to changing the Bible, the classics in literature would be changed. And we're seeing this happen. So Dr. Dunnigan recalled Mark Twain's writings um, that Dr. Day had said was one of the examples. The casual reader reading a revised version of a classic would never even suspect that there was any change. But the changes would be such as to promote the acceptability of the new system. Aren't they changing books? Taking out the word nigger? More time in schools, but they wouldn't learn anything. They'll learn some things much as, uh, but not as much as formerly. Better schools and better areas with better people, their kids will learn more. And the better schools, learning would be accelerated. He said, this is how we think we can push evolution, by pushing kids to learn more. He seemed to be suggesting that their brains would evolve that their offspring would evolve, sort of pushing evolution where kids would learn and be more intelligent at a younger age. After this pushing would alter their physiology, as if their pushing would alter their physiology. But he said overall schooling would be prolonged. Obama's education sector, uh, secretary Oh, Jesus, I can see his face, but I can't think of his name right now. He was interviewed, gave an interview on PBS, and stated that education, that schools need to be the hub of our community. He stated that schools um, needed to be much longer, the school hours, and he even stated that it should be seven days a week. And I will link to below to that video, but I cannot remember his name right now. Yes, yeah, school was planned to go all summer, that the summer school vacation would become a thing of the past. And if you know what I'm talking about with Obama's education secretary, then you know you're hearing this. This was the plan back in 1969 and they were trying to bring it about during the Obama years. He said, his secretary of education said that we should do away with summer vacations and that school should be seven days a week. Well, that's, that is getting full control over all children in one's country, government getting full control so that they could indoctrinate them into this new world system. Good schools, oh, here it goes again, sorry. Um, good schools would become more competitive. Students would have to decide at a younger age what they would want to study and get onto that track early. Studies would be concentrated 
in much greater depth but narrowed and students wouldn't have access to material in other fields outside their own area of study. So the uh, liberal education, the, the liberal arts, all of that would be done away with and all students would be geared to specialize in one area and that would leave their brains very very imbalanced controlling who has access to information he was already talking about computers and education and at that time he said anybody who wanted computer access or access to books that were not directly related to their field of study would have to have very good reason for doing so otherwise access would be denied schools as the hub of the community now we've also heard mainstream media reporters talking about how schools had to be the hub of the community. We had to let go of this idea that children are only the responsibility of parents. So schools would become more important in people's overall life. Kids in addition to their academics would have to get into school activities unless they wanted to feel completely out of it. And look at all the children all across the country. They're all involved in after school activities. Kids wanting any activities outside of school would be almost forced to get them through the school. There would be fewer opportunities outside. The pressures of the accelerated academic program, the accelerated demands where kids would feel they had to be a part of something, one or another athletic club or some school activity, these pressures would create burnout. The smartest ones would learn how to cope with pressures and to survive. So think about Obamacare. Think about not the school activities, but think about the homework that these kids in first grade are bringing home, hours of homework, and they can't figure it out because of this common core. Did I say Obamacare? I'm sorry, common core. And their parents can't figure out how to do this common core homework. They end up crying. I've read articles throughout the years since they instituted Common Core. Children are throwing up. The pressure to um, pass these standardized exams, it's all creating, creating so much stress. And that is brought about deliberately to see who's fit and unfit. Yes, uh, those who are unfit, those who get stressed out, will move on to, oh, drugs and alcohol. And he indicated that psychiatric services would be there to help them, but that psychiatric services would increase dramatically. And all schools provide an in-house psychiatrist for the students. Today, and many of the schools, the teachers sending them to these school psychiatrists, put them on medications psychiatric medications that set them up to become drug addicts and alcoholics. Yes, there will always be the super achievers. Those who could not uh, would fall by the wayside. Those who could not be the super achievers. And they will be more dispensable, expendable. Education would be lifelong. Adults would be going to school. There'll always be new information that adults must have to keep up with. When you can't keep up with it anymore, you're too old. And that was another way of letting older people know that their time was up. Some books would just disappear from the libraries, and we know that this is, this is happening. Changing laws, blue laws about Sunday sales, certain Sunday activities would change. And I'm not sure about South Carolina, 
But I remember when those blue laws changed in Massachusetts and suddenly there were liquor stores open on Sunday. Gambling laws would be repeated or relaxed so that gambling would be increased and governments would get involved in gambling. The lottery. Bankruptcy laws would be changed. Um, but Dr. Dunnigan said there was not much said about that. But bankruptcy laws have been changed. And they do favor those who are within the 1%. And they hurt those, the ordinary American. Bankruptcy laws have been changed significantly in terms of school debt. Well, when you have an education department that is a for-profit agency, they're going to change bankruptcy laws where student loans you will no longer be able to discharge. And that is what happened. Students cannot file for bankruptcy because of student debt. So they are permanently debtors, permanently cemented in this prison system that has been brought about purposely. Um, he talked about antitrust laws, that competition would be increased, but the increase in competition would be controlled. It wouldn't be a free competition, it would just be competition within the members of the club, the elite competition, corporations competing. But small business would never be able to compete with these huge companies and that is what we are living nobody outside the club will be able to compete it would be like teams competing within a professional sports league and if you're the nfl or the american or national baseball league you compete within the league but the league is all in agreement on what the rules of the competition will be it will be uh Controlled, not free. The encouragement of drug abuse to create a jungle atmosphere. Now we all know that the CIA is uh, by far the biggest uh, drug dealer. They importing drugs, they unleashing drugs in an awful lot of neighborhoods. They've unleashed drugs in ghettos, quote-unquote, to get people addicted. So drug use, yeah, it sure has increased, hasn't it? Alcohol use would increase. Law enforcement efforts against drugs would be increased. The war on drugs. And the increased availability of drugs would provide a sort of law of the jungle whereby the weak and the unfit would be selected out. He stated, before the earth was overpopulated, there was a law of the jungle where only the fittest survived. So what these elite psychopathic crazy people were doing were deliberately designing a new jungle where only the fittest would survive. You had to be able to protect yourself against the elements and wild animals and disease. But if you were fit, you survived. So, Dr. Day said, we're over-civilized. And the unfit are enabled, are enabled to survive only at the expense of those who are more fit. The abuse of drugs would restore the law of the jungle and selection of the fittest for survival news about drug abuse and law enforcement efforts would tend to keep drugs in the public consciousness. And it would also tend to reduce this unwarranted American complacency that the world is a safe place and a nice place. Alcohol abuse will be promoted and demoted at the same time. The vulnerable and the weak would respond to the promotions and therefore use and abuse more alcohol. Drunk driving would become more of a problem and stricter rules about driving under the influence 
would be established so that more and more people would lose their privilege to drive. Much more in the way of um, psychological services. So they would be provided to those who got hooked on drugs and alcohol and the providing of that it creates a cottage industry where many many people make uh, a fortune off of those who are hooked on drugs and alcohol the <laughs> sorry drug and alcohol um, will screen out the unfit people who otherwise are pretty good would also be subject to getting hooked and if they were really worth their salt they would have enough sense to seek psychological counseling and to benefit from, from it and recover from their alcohol or drug abuse restrictions on travel not everybody should be free to travel the way they do now in the United States travel the elite see as not a right but a privilege and we are seeing restrictions on travel now um, there's an awful lot of these uh, checkpoints on the roads and they are getting people used to the idea that you don't have a right to travel freely we can stop you at any time we can ask you for your papers and we are the ones who give you permission we're the ones who give you this privilege no more security nothing is permanent streets would be rerouted and renamed oh my god and we are seeing that happen today areas you had not seen in a while would become unfamiliar among other things this would contribute to older people feeling that it was time to move on they feel they couldn't keep up with the changes in areas that were once familiar buildings will be allowed to stand empty and deteriorate and my god do we see that all over the place and streets would be allowed to deteriorate in certain localities the purpose of this was to provide the jungle the depressed atmosphere for the unfit and he made the connection between buildings and bridges uh, they would begin to collapse we're seeing that um, there would be more accidents involving airplanes, railroads, automobiles. Well, if you're not uh, following what is taking place and what has been taking place over the last couple of years, we have seen so many airplane accidents, so many railroad accidents, trains uh, derailing. And we certainly see a lot of automobile accidents. This will contribute to the feeling of insecurity, that nothing will be safe. Crime used to manage society. The, the created slums, yes, slums are not brought about because the people in the area are lazy and they don't want to work. They are deliberately brought about, they are created. Uh, so created slums and other areas well maintained, uh, people able to leave the slums for better areas then would learn to better appreciate the importance of human accomplishment uh, there would be no sympathy for those who were left behind in the jungle in the ghettos of drugs and deteriorating neighborhoods we think we can effectively limit crime to the slum areas so it won't be spread heavily into better areas uh, increased security would be needed for the better areas more police better coordinated police efforts and Dr. Dunnigan was reminded of hearing from the John Birch Society that they said support your local police do not let them be consolidated and we have now our police militarized and the federal government has pretty much taken control over our local law enforcement that is a rapid consolidation of our police force. There would be a whole new industry of residential security systems to develop with alarms and locks and alarms 
going into the police department so that people could protect their wealth and their well-being, um, generating all this more crime would also generate people to have a feeling that they needed more protection. Dr. Dunnigan felt that a sort of repeated thing throughout this presentation was the recognized evil and then this self-forgiveness thing. Dr. Day, yes, well, the kids will be stressed out in school, but we'll provide them with psychological services. And we will deliberately cause people to become drug addicted and alcohol addicted, but we'll provide them with help. And here, we're going to create more crime, but we will provide security systems for them. See, we've given you a way out. Curtailment of American industrial preeminence now. Hasn't this occurred? American industry. Uh, it was the first that Dr. Duncan heard this term, global interdependence. The stated plan was that different parts of the world would be assigned different roles of industry and commerce in a unified global system. The continued preeminence of the United States and the relative independence and self-sufficiency of the United States would have to change in order to create a new structure. You first have to tear down the old, and that is what we are living, the tearing down of the old here in the United States. All of the outsourcing was deliberate to tear down American industry. Our system would have to be curtailed to, in order to give other countries a chance to build their industries because otherwise they would not be able to compete against the United States. And it was especially true of heavy industry, uh, steel and automobiles. And that's why we suddenly got cars from Japan. We put Japan on an equal footing with our own domestically produced automobiles. But the Japanese product would be better. Things would be made so they would break and fall apart. That is in the United States. So that people would tend to prefer the imported variety. And this would give a bit of a boost to foreign competitors. Don't you love how we have all been controlled? Yeah, Honda. I have, I have never had, you know, a car other than a Honda because they were more reliable than the American automobiles. And who knew that this was deliberately brought about? But things would be made so they would break and fall apart. How many conversations have I had with people over the years that suddenly? All of the products that we buy just fall apart very quickly. We've got to run out and buy something new. When just decades before, we could feel pretty confident that we could buy a product and it would last forever. So yes, um, more and more often people were experiencing Ford, GM, Chrysler, their product just falling apart, window handles and plastic parts, they would just break. Though now I'm experiencing it with Hondas. Uh, your patriotism about buying American would soon give way to practicality. Pra um, patriotism would go down the drain. Okay, um, I don't know why that keeps happening. But yes, things being made deliberately defective and unreliable not only was to tear down patriotism, but to be a source of irritation to people who would use 
those products. Again, the idea was to instill in Americans an insecurity, promoting the notion that the world isn't a terribly reliable place. The United States was to be kept strong in information, communications, high technology, education, and agriculture because the United States was the keystone of this global system, but heavy industry would be transported out. And that's exactly what occurred. Uh, comments made about heavy industry was that we had had enough environmental damage from smokestacks and industrial waste, so people would put up with it for a while. It was good because Americans would hear about how we were damaging the environment, creating so much pollution that Americans would re readily accept the destruction of heavy industry. Shifting, pol uh, shifting pol populations and economies tearing the social roots. So talks about people losing their jobs as a result of industry and opportunities for retraining and particularly population shifts would be brought about deliberately. Population shifts were to be brought about so that people would be tending to move into the Sun Belt. Okay, South Carolina. South Carolina's economy is doing much better than most states because a lot of corporations are um, setting up industry here in South Carolina. The Sun Belt. There would be the sort of people without roots in their new locations. How many people have I spoken to in four years that have moved to South Carolina for a job opportunity but they were feeling rather unsettled. They, coming from the north to the south, having difficulty adjusting to the cultural differences, having difficulty creating a social life. They would be the sort of people without roots in their new locations and traditions are easier to change in a place where there are a lot of transplanted people as compared to tra uh, trying to change traditions in a place where people grew up and had an extended family and had roots. So this deliberate destruction of industry in the North and the tax benefits to corporations to locate themselves in the South are creating a lot of northerners coming down to the south but those who are southerners they are being changed by this flood of northerners or westerners coming to the south so it's easier to change an area if you flood them with all of these transients all of these people relocating from other areas isn't it fascinating how deliberate all of this is? But I have to tell you, these elite really are uh, really intelligent <laughs> and adept at controlling the masses. New medical care systems. If you pick up from a northeast industrial city and you transplant yourself to the south, Sun Belt or southwest, you'll be more accepting of whatever kind of medical care you get in that new system because you don't have any roots in that place um, and you just accept whatever it is that they have. He said, we take control first of the port cities, New York, San Francisco, Seattle. The idea being that this is a piece of strategy, the idea being that if you control the port cities with your philosophy and your way of life, the heartland in between has to yield. The Midwest uh, does seem to have maintained its conservatives, uh, conservatism 
um, but this was stated back in 1988. Uh, the Midwest is being infiltrated with an awful lot of liberals who are changing the Midwest, their, their uh, way of life and their culture. But as you take away industry and jobs and relocate people, then this strategy to break down conservatives, conservatism is um, an easy way to do it. When you take away industry and people uh, are unemployed and poor, they will accept whatever change seems to come their way. Whatever allows them to survive, survive. And their morals and their commitment to things will give way to survival. Some heavy industry would remain just enough to maintain a sort of a seedbed of industrial skills which could be expanded if their plan didn't work out as intended. But we now know their plan worked out swell. So the country would be not devoid of assets and skills. Uh, but it was hoped and expected that the worldwide specialization would be carried on. One of the upshots of all of this is that with this global interdependence, the national identities would tend to be de-emphasized. Each area depended on each other area for one or another elements of its life. That would make us all become citizens of the world, rather than citizens of any one country. Sports is a tool of social change. Sports in the United States was to be changed, in part a way of de-emphasizing nationalism. They wanted to bring in soccer. And funny, as I was walking around the track, I'm looking at these young kids playing soccer. Soccer, uh, decades ago, uh, my family coming from Scotland, Soccer is a big deal in Scotland. My father played soccer. Um, he was, I think, the coach of the high school. This is how close my family was. I didn't even know if my father was the coach of soccer at Bayside High. But my brother played soccer. But soccer was not um, anything that the majority of children here in the United States played. Now, soccer is quite common and a popular sport for these kids. They would try to uh, de-emphasize the importance of American baseball because there are a lot of people. The, the reason to bring in Scotland was because it was seen as an international sport. So they had to bring in Americans to be the global citizens with soccer. They wanted to um, they wanted to de-emphasize and hopefully eliminate, eliminate baseball because baseball is really an American sport. And how would they do that? Talk about manipulation. What they would do is uh, make the salaries go very, very high. Yes, pay them outrageous amounts of money that Americans would become so disgusted with them that they wouldn't even want to watch baseball anymore. But that never happened. Football, harder to dismantle. So widely played in colleges. Um, but they thought that there was something about the violence in football that met a psychological need in Americans their vicarious need for violence. So they kept football the same. So they did see soccer as the keystone of athletics because it was such a worldwide sport that the United States would have to get on that band wagon so we could all be citizens of the world. Um, hunting Hunting requires guns, and gun control is a big element in these plans. Uh, the, um, the ideas that they had was gun ownership is a privilege. Not everybody should have guns. The few privileged people who should be allowed to have guns 
could still be allowed to hunt, but other people would have to ask permission to hunt. Uh, very important in sports was sports for girls. Athletics would be pushed for girls because they wanted to get girls away from dolls. Dolls would not be pushed because girls should not be thinking about babies and reproduction. Girls and boys really don't need to be all that different. And what are we seeing with this whole uh, chant, transgenderism and which is really amazing that they are doing away with uh, words like boy and girl. And this is part of the plan. Yeah, so tea sets were to go the way of dolls. And all these things that traditionally were thought of as feminine would be de-emphasized as girls got into more masculine pursuits. Sports pages would be full of the scores of girls' teams just right along with the boys' teams. Um, he said something like, You'll see people in the movies doing everything you can think of. Uh, it was intended to bring sex out in the open, open. Violence would be made more graphic. This was intended to desensitize people to violence. Later on, it will become clear where this is headed. So there would be more realistic violence in entertainment, which would make it easier for people to adjust. People's attitudes towards death would change. People would not be so fearful of it, but more accepting of it. And they would not be so aghast at the sight of dead people or injured people. People would just learn to say, well, I don't want that happen, happening to me, but they wouldn't care that it happened to somebody else. And yeah, the destruction of humanity. And we're living it, people not caring about one another. Uh, the first statement suggesting that the plan includes numerous human casualties, which the survivors would see and be okay with. Music, music will get worse. Lyrics would become more openly sexual. Uh, no new sugary romantic music would be publicized. Um, all, all the old music would be brought back on certain radio stations, which is exactly what has happened. Um, so that the older people could hear their music. Older folks would have uh, their own radio stations. And the younger people, for the younger people, their music would just continually to get, would get worse and worse. It would be played on their stations. And look at what has happened to music. Entertainment would be a tool to influence young people. Changes would all be aimed at the young who are in their formative years and the older generation would be passing. Not only could you not change them, but they are relatively unimportant anyhow. Younger generation being formed are the ones that would be important for the future in the 21st century. Yeah, bringing back the old music that was seen as a privilege for the old people. And old people would also be given other privileges like free transportation, breaks on purchases, discounts, tax discounts, a number of privileges because they were older. It would be a reward for the generation which had grown up through the Depression and World War II. They had deserved it and they were going to be rewarded with all of these goodies. It would help them ease them through their final years in comfort. The presentation at that point, according to Dr. Dunnigan, was now beginning to get rather grim. Things would tighten up, and the tightening up would be accelerated. The old movies and old songs would be withdrawn. The gentler entertainment would be withdrawn. 
travel restrictions, implanted IDs, um, travel instead of being easy for old folks, travel then would become very restricted. People would need permission to travel. They would need a good reason to travel. They would have to have ID cards. And later on, there will be implanted IDs under the skin where they would be able to identify every individual. Food control, food supplies would come under tight control. Population growth didn't slow down. If it didn't slow down, food shortages could be created in a hurry and people would realize the dangers of overpopulation. So many people do not understand that all of this is deliberate. Cause a food shortage. Claim that there's too many people in the world and people will buy that lie. The food supply will be brought under centralized control. And you know what? Monsanto has successfully brought our food under control with genetically modified organisms. The geoengineering, the dumping of aluminum into our soil, we will be forced to buy from Monsanto those aluminum resistant seeds to grow any food. But we won't be able to grow food. Perhaps we will have to ask permission to grow any food our own. Growing one's food would be outlawed and it will be done under some pretext. Weather control. Weather control. To Dr. Dunnigan, it was a striking statement. He said, we can, Dr. Day said, we can or soon will be able to control the weather. He said, I'm not merely referring to dropping iodide crystals into the clouds to precipitate rain. That's already here. That's already uh, what we are doing. That was back in 1969, but real control. And weather was seen as a weapon of war, a weapon of influencing public policy, influencing uh, the policies that they want to enact because of global warming, climate change. He, Dr. Day said, on the one hand, you can make drought during the growing season so that nothing will grow. And on the other hand, you can make for very heavy rains during harvest season so the fields are too muddy to bring in the harvest. And indeed, one might be able to do both. Doesn't it remind you of the years of watching all of these weather events? Back in 2011, the flooding that occurred in Missouri, the heartland, the it was prime, prime farmland that was destroyed destroyed by the floods that were deliberately created. Uh, there was no statement on how this would be done. It was stated that either it was already possible or very, very close to being possible to control the weather. Politics, he said that very few people really know how government works. Something to the effect that elected, elected officials are influenced in ways that they don't even realize. And they are carrying out plans that have been made for them, they thinking that they are authors of these plans, but actually they are manipulated in ways they don't understand. Um, know how people respond, making them do what you want. Uh, people can carry in their minds, this is what Dr. Day said, people can carry in their minds and act upon two contradictory ideas at one time, provided that these two contradictory ideas are kept far enough apart he stated, you can know pretty well how rational people are going to respond to certain circumstances or to certain information that they encounter. So to determine the response, you, you just need only control the kind of data or information that they're presented with and the kinds of circumstances that they're in. And being rational people, they'll do what you want them to do. They may not fully understand what they're doing or why, but they will act in accordance to how one is manipulating them.
falsified scientific research. Some scientific research data could be and indeed has been already back in 1969 falsified in order to bring about desired results. Now we see scientific data in all fields being manipulated, falsified to bring about a desired result. Studies on genetically modified organisms falsified to bring about the result of getting people to accept that they eating genetically modified food is healthy. All of the climate change data falsified. Well, I could go on and on. The Wi-Fi, the microwave frequencies, studies produced by uh, the industry or corporation that is rolling out uh, the genetically modified organisms or the microwave frequencies and we're accepting them as the truth, as real. Well, people don't ask the right questions. Some people are too trusting. Yes, that is quite right. Um, all of this was to bring about this new international governing body probably coming through the United Nations with a world court, but it, uh, Dr. Day said it wouldn't necessarily be those structures. Back in 1969, there wasn't a whole lot of acceptance of the United Nations. So efforts would continue to give the United Nations increasing importance. And United Nations now there are so many people who look at that organization as, yeah, an organization filled with people who are trying so hard to bring about peace. They have no clue that the United Nations is such an evil organization bringing about this new world order, which will have one world government that will be taking away all of their rights and leaving them slaves. He said people would be more and more used to the idea of relinquishing some national sovereignty. Economic interdependence would foster this goal. From a peaceful standpoint, avoidance of war would foster it from the standpoint of worrying about hostilities. And it was stated by Dr. Day that war would become obsolete. The new system would be brought in if not by peaceful cooperation, with everybody willingly yielding national sovereignty and then by bringing the nation to the brink of nuclear war. There would be strong public outcry to negotiate a public peace and people would willingly give up national sovereignty in order to achieve peace, especially when they're hearing that nuclear war was on the horizon. What have we been hearing lately? Uh, if there were too many people in the right places who resisted this, there might be a need to use one or two or possibly more nuclear weapons to bring them to their knees to convince people that they meant business. By the time one or two of those went off, those nuclear bombs, then everybody, even the most reluctant, would yield. And this negotiated peace would be very convincing. And the whole thing was rehearsed. Uh, there would be technological means for the individual and governments to control over population. So in this regard, war would become obsolete. It would no longer be needed. Terrorism would be usually uh, used widely in Europe and in other parts, parts of the world. This was back in 1969. It could become necessary in the United States if the United States did not move more rapidly into accepting this system. Along with this came a bit of scolding that Americans had to 
had it too good anyway, and just a little bit of terrorism would help convince Americans that the world is indeed a dangerous place, and that if they didn't relinquish control to the proper authorities, it would only become more dangerous. Financial control, money and banking, uh, inflation is infinite. You can put an infinite number on zeros after any number and put the decimal points wherever you want. Um, that the uh, inflation was a tool of the controllers. Money would become predominantly credit. Exchange of money would not be cash or anything palpable, but electronic credit, credit signals. Uh, purchases of any significant amount would be done electronically. Earnings would be electronically entered into your account. It would be a single banking system. It may have the appearance of being more than one, but ultimately and basically it would be one single banking system so that when you got paid, your pay would be entered for you into your account balance. And then when you purchased anything at the point of purchase, it would be deducted from your account balance and you would actually carry nothing with you. Also, computer records would be kept on everyone, whatever it was that they purchased, so that if you were purchasing too much of any particular item and some official wanted to know what you were doing with your money, they could go back and review your purchases and determine what you were buying. Um, a purchase of a significant size, like an automobile, bicycle, refrigerator, radio, or a television or whatever, might have some sort of identification on it so it could be traced so that very quickly anything which was either given away or stolen authorities would be able to establish immediately who stole it or who gave it away wealth represents power and wealth in the hands of a lot of people is not good so they, they would Make sure that only the 1% had the wealth. This gap, this wealth gap, has been brought about deliberately um, because the 99%, um, well, they know their place and they can be controlled. They believe that wealth in the hands of a lot of people, it's just not good for the people. So if you save too much, they will be able to access your electronic records and you might be taxed if you're saving too much. Um, if you began to show a pattern of saving too much, you might have your pay cut. The idea being is to prevent people from accumulating any wealth, which might have long range disruptive influence on the system. So people would be encouraged to use credit to borrow and then also be encouraged to renege on their debt so they would have their credit destroyed and if you're just too stupid to handle credit wisely well you're just one of those unfit and too bad for you. Surveillance implants televisions that watch you. In 1969 Dr. Day stated that um, the identification card will be replaced with a skin implant uh, because single cards can be lost or stolen. The skin implant, on the other hand, can't lose that. You can't transfer it. Uh, it can't be counterfeited. counterfeited. Um, and you will be watching television and not know that somebody is watching you as you're watching television. And Boy, isn't that happening now. There will be a central monitoring station to watch us all. What we are doing in our homes, what we are saying. This is 1984 on steroids. How would people accept these things into their homes? People would buy them. And when they buy their own television, they won't even know what they're buying at first. Um, but we learned late in the game, cable TV, <laughs> when that came about in the, wasn't that in the 80s? They were already spying on us.
with those cable boxes. The television would be used for purchases. You would become so dependent on your TV or your monitoring screen. I'm bringing it up to date. He didn't say that in 69. But he said that televisions, you wouldn't even have to leave your home to go shopping. You just turn on your TV. And you could flip the switch from place to place to choose a refrigerator or clothing. It would become so convenient that people would become dependent. The television, the so-called built-in monitor, uh, would be something that you could not do without. And how many cannot do without these screens that we now sit in front of or walk around with every single day? Uh, discussion of audio monitors. He said the authorities would want to hear what was going on. Any wire that went into your house, for example, your telephone wire, could be used to listen in on what you're saying in your home. Before all these changes would take place with electronic monitoring, it was mentioned that there would be service trucks all over the place working on the wires and putting in new cables. This is how people who on the inside would know how things were progressing. Home ownership will be a thing of the past. The cost of housing and financing housing would gradually be made so high that most people couldn't afford it. People who already owned their homes would be allowed to keep them, but as the years go by, it would be more and more difficult for young people to buy a house and more and more difficult for even those who own a house to hold on to it. Small apartments, which would not accommodate very many children, will be available to people. The micro apartment, Agenda 21 apartments, decades. Our entire lives have been controlled. Our entire lives we've been lied to and manipulated to achieve the result not of our own wishes, but of the wishes of these psychopaths. Is that upsetting to you? It is to me. Yeah, so home ownership will diminish. Uh, and there will be no sympathy for anybody who uh, can't buy a home, or lose a home. Well, that's why we heard the repeated message um, back in uh, 2008 you know, the mortgage crisis and so many people losing their homes because of these uh, fraudulent mortgages and Jesus, now I can't remember the term of that mortgage, but the ease with which they made it available. Mortgages, banks wanting people who they knew could not afford the mortgage to sign on the dotted line give them a home, and eventually they were tossed out of it. The whole thing, fraudulent, deliberate. But what did we hear the majority say? It was because people were irresponsible. That's right. Irresponsible Americans who got into these mortgages and they couldn't managed their finances properly, so they lost their home. And I'm not saying that that didn't happen. I am saying the majority who lost their home, they were manipulated to sign on the dot to take these mortgages. And so many lost their homes due to bank fraud. But you didn't hear that repeated. You heard Americans, they're just irresponsible. The whole thing was deliberate. But there would be no sympathy for those who couldn't afford homes, who lost their homes, uh, and the homes, the increased taxes and other regulations would make it very hard for people to even hang on to the homes that they have. People would be assigned where they would live, and it would be common to have non-family members living with you. There would be a central housing authority 
and the arrival of the totalitarian government. When the new system takes over, people will be expected to sign allegiance to it, indicating that they don't have any reservations or holding back to the old system. There just won't be any room, Dr. Day said, for people who won't go along. We can't have such people cluttering up the place. So much people um, would be taken to special places. These people would be taken to special places and done away with. The system would not support them. Death would be the only alternative. And there would be no martyrs. They would not be killed in such a way or disposed of in such a way that they could serve as an inspiration to other people the way martyrs do. People will just disappear. Bringing in the new system, Dr. Day said, probably would occur on a weekend in the winter. Everything would shut down on Friday evening and Monday morning when everybody wakened. There would be an announcement of a new system that was in place. During the process in getting the United States ready for these changes, everybody would be busier with less leisure time and less opportunity to really look about and see what was going on around them. <laughs> and we sure are seeing that. So, Dr. Dunnigan summarized all of these things, things said by one individual at one time in one place relating to so many different human endeavors and then look to see how many of these in uh, how many of these plans actually came about they were executed and met success dr dunnigan said there is no design uh, no denying jesus i can barely talk no denying that this is all controlled, that there is indeed a conspiracy. So the question then becomes, what to do? What are we all to do? Well, put our faith in God, pray, ask for his guidance, and secondly, do what we can to inform other individuals as much as possible, as much as they may be interested. Some people just don't care because they're preoccupied with getting along in their own personal endeavors. But he said, rather than accept peace and justice, which we hear so much now, it's, it's just a cliche. Dr. Dunnigan said we need to insist on liberty and justice for all. So if you made it through these two hours, wow. I will link below to this document. I hope that you circulate it. I did do a lot of the reading for people who have a hard time reading uh, from the computer screen. Um, unfortunately, we still have an awful lot of people who are only concerned about their own personal endeavors. They still remain the majority. So, all I can say is that for every one of my subscribers I hope that you prepare I hope that you put in place everything that you need for survival because right now see my thinking on this is it has been for years that they will continue the boiling frog scenario um, they will accelerate uh, these agendas and they will create so much drama coming out of mainstream media that the majority of the American people will not know what the hell is going on and they will just throw up their hands and say to hell with this I'm just living my own life so that they can bring in their new world system it is coming it is coming you know <laughs> many of these plans uh, it took a while. Some of the plans we have yet to see, but the majority of what you just saw has already taken place. So yes, they are hammering in the last nail in the coffin. And 
I do think it's important to continue informing people. I will until the fat lady sings or until the fat lady sings about my life and I'm gone. But I do not see any possibility of turning this around. Not with not with the majority of Americans that we have.